You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It's Education Wednesday time, not just for one, but for a double dose of options boot camp goodness. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever compelling, ever insightful, at least for this show, we hope ever educational options insider. Radio Network. Thank you to all of you who continue to make Options Bootcamp one of the premier options podcasts on the planet. We love you all out there. Even if you do keep driving my bandwidth bills up month after month, we love you all. If you want to contribute to that, if you want to help keep driving my bandwidth bills up, <laughs> then head on over to your platform of choice wherever you get this fine program. And do leave a little review, a little five-star review. It always helps new folks discover the show, and they're clearly legion. There are new people out there discovering it all the time. So thank you for your efforts. Just like MJTZ is our five-star reviewer this week. Just saying, loving it. Great listen. Well, thank you. Short, concise, to the point. We love it. Thank you, MJTZ. And everyone else takes the time out there to rate and review. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, maybe you want to hear our double options boot camp extravaganza this week. You don't want to wait until next week. Maybe you want to get in there live and heckle us while you're at it. All sorts of fun going on. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more about all of that fun. And speaking of fun, we can't have fun on the show until I welcome on my compatriot, my partner in all things options crime, the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring, also the author of one or two or perhaps half a dozen options-oriented tomes. Mr. P, welcome back to the program, sir. Hello, Mark. It's great to be back. We've got great stuff to talk about today, I see. Yes, we do, sir. So let's get to it. A little bit of the old basic training. All right, Boot, it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? All right, everybody. Welcome to the basic training. I was just checking, making sure all the live stream is working here. So all the pro folks who want to join us live today can get at us by wait a week when you can get the goodness. In fact, for all you pro folks, what we're going to do is after we record today's double header extravaganza, I get it. Some people are busy right now. They can't join live. If you want to hear the next episode early, then of course, we'll put it on the pro podcast feed. A little bit of an early release bonus. We did that, of course, with the options playbook radio. Brian and I did a double palooza yesterday for you pro folks as well that second episode the huddle episode is waiting for you over there on the pro podcast feed as well the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more and dan we're going to talk about something kind of funky today i don't know you feel you feel a little funky 
I am always feeling funky, Mark. You were a bassist. You're always feeling funky <laughs> out there, sir. But yeah, today's one's a little bit of a weird one. It kind of came to us. I think we had a listener question on another show somewhere along these lines, and it got me thinking about these two particular strategies. We don't talk about them very often. I think once people hear them, they'll see why. But I thought, you know, it might be interesting to at least explore them on Options Bootcamp, give kind of the, the pros and cons, the pluses and minuses to doing them. So, Dan, before we even get into the nitty gritty, what we're talking about here, if I were to say to you, let's say, for example, a, a covered strangle, if I just threw that term out at you, what is your response? What do you think of? Um, can be a brilliant, brilliant trade uh, when used under the right circumstances. Uh oh, I think you got a raid coming in. What's what's the hot item? What are you raiding? <laughs> oh no, I just ended up getting a getting a little message here. That's oh, all. A little Amazon shopping going on for you behind the scenes. <laughs> your order is arriving. I <laughs> will uh, we'll let you get your order while we dive into what the heck a covered strangle is. What are we talking about, listeners? Sounds kind of funky, doesn't it? Covered strangle. A lot of different things. A lot of different moving parts uh, with this strategy. You're familiar with the covered call. This is. Taken that, but going to the next level. Listen, let's go back to our old friend XYZ. We've all made and lost fortunes over the. I think I'm up now, lifetime. Dana, are you up now, lifetime on XYZ? Or are you still in that hole? Oh, dude, no, I'm killing it in XYZ. Are you man. killing it? <laughs> I'm glad to hear. I know you were kind of behind the eight ball a little bit. Glad to hear you dug out of that hole there <laughs> uh, with uh, with XYZ. Maybe we can help you today with today's today's strategy du jour. Okay, the covered strangle, listeners. XYZ hanging out around fifty bucks. You've got some stock in your back pocket, and you're saying to yourself, self, what can I do to kind of jazz this thing up? I don't think it's really going to explode really anywhere in the next month or two. So what can I do to maybe add a little income, a little fuel to the old fire out there, make it a little bit more worth my while to hold this thing for the next month or two? So you decide, you look at the options chain, you say, you know what? I've had this stock a little bit. I don't mind letting some go $10 north of here. So... You turn around, and for the next month out, you sell the one-month 60-strike call. And in our example, because we like nice round numbers, listeners, you get a buck for that. It's a fair amount of juice, but you're getting that in our example. So what have you done so far? This is a straightforward covered call. You get this. You know this. We've talked about this on the show many times in the past. You've collected a dollar. Stock goes all the way up to the 60-strike now. You're selling that stock. You're letting your stock go at the effective price of 60 plus the $1 you collected. So $61. It's a win-win. Everyone's happy. You collected $1 in income. So the stock hovers here or drops a little bit. You still keep that $1 in your back pocket, which is about 2% for one month's worth. That's not, it's not bad in our example here. You might be content with that. You might say, okay, I'm good. Let's just get my 2%. And then you could rinse and repeat. Do that month after month. Obviously, the levels are going to change a little bit depending on what's going on every month. You can't rely on that same vol level and everything else, that same skew. But uh, all things being equal, 2% a month for a year, not a bad little income stream you've created for yourself. But what if you say to yourself, self, that is not enough. I want more. That's where the coverage strangle comes in. Now, there's a couple of other caveats I would throw out there now. Also to this conversation, not just adding more, everyone wants more, but you also have to say to yourself and mean it, can't just say it, you have to really mean it, listeners. You have to say, you know what? I own some now at 50 this stock. I wouldn't mind picking up some at a lower level. And you have to determine what that lower level is. In our example, we decided, you know what? I wouldn't mind buying more of XYZ if it dropped below 40. So guess what you can do in that scenario? You've already overwritten the 60 call. So you got that $1 in your pocket. You turn around and say, I'm going to buy some more if it drops below 40. So you sell the one month 40 strike put in our example as well. And now, because we like to keep things even, $1 for that put as well. Obviously, in real life, the put's going to be trading a little bit more than the call, but we're keeping things straightforward for our example here. So you collect $1 there as well. So now what have you done? You've already sold that 60 track call. You collected $1 for doing that. You also turned around and sold the 40 strike put. And you also collected a dollar. So now you collected $2. So right off the bat, you can see the obvious benefit of this strategy, listeners, beyond just the covered call. You've doubled your income. You've gone from $1 to $2. And now you've gone from 2% to 4% income in just a month. That's a pretty decent return, even in these crazy times that we're living in here, listeners. And that over time, you keep replicating that over time throughout the year, that's going to have a substantial impact on the profitability of your position. So now the pros, more income, pretty obvious. 
the downsides to this. Now, we just sold the 40 strike put. So listeners, you've been listening to the show for a while. Even some of your newer folks understand once you sell that put, guess what? You're on the hook for buying that stock below the 40 strike. In our example, we collected $1 from selling the call and $1 from selling the put. So we collected $2. So if the stock does drop to that 40 strike and below, we will end up buying the stock at an effective price of $38. Remember, $40 minus the $2 we already collected. So that's not a bad level given where XYZ is trading right now. Now, of course, there are going to be other cons to this position as well. You will have to put up margin for that 40 put that you are selling. So it's not a completely free lunch. You're not just doubling your money with no other costs. There is an opportunity cost to this trade where you are going to have to put aside more margin. If you want exactly how much margin, we went through all of that on a recent episode. Go look through the archives of selling puts, cash secured puts, and look for those. We gave you a bunch of different examples of how brokers calculate how much margin is required. But there will be some capital taken out of your account and set aside for this trade. So just factor that in when you're doing this trade. Maybe it's not worth it for you at the end of the day to do that, but there is an opportunity cost to that. So there you go. That is what we're talking about here. That is effectively the covered strangle. You're looking to increase your overall income stream. The covered call isn't getting it done for you, but you also have to be comfortable. You're adding risk to your position. I have to be comfortable increasing your stock to the downside. So you're going to be adding to your position now. So you have to be okay with that. And then also you have to be okay with the opportunity costs in the form of the margin that will be set aside for this trade. Now, Dan, at the top of the show, you said this can be a great strategy if used in the right scenario. So over there at MTM, what in your mind is the right scenario, the right use case for a coverage triangle, sir? Well, there's sort of this crazy dichotomy with this, like it, it, like selling a strangle, like just, you know, when we hear somebody say, oh, I'm selling a strangle, like the first thing that can come to mind for a lot of people is crazy gambler, you know, active trader who's throwing the dice and taking on immense amounts of risk. But then on the other hand, If we're doing it in a very controlled, strategic way as an investor and and doing it in the way that you just described, it's a very, very conservative value investor oriented strategy where, you know, you're basically making the agreement with yourself, with the market, with whatever to buy when it's cheap in in your estimation or sell when it's overpriced in your own estimation so um it 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 all kind of has to do with strategy and that's one thing that we hammer away at on this show a lot is knowing your objective for a trade once you go in it and, and when you have that objective to be a value investor it's a su- this is a super powerful tool all right. I said we're going to go crazy on this show. You ready to go a little crazy, get a little nuts? I've, I've already started without you. <laughs> <laughs> I expect nothing less on our Wednesday showtime. All right. We talked about the coverage strangle. That's already pretty crazy. We're adding some risk. Some people may not be comfortable with that already. Now let's turn it up to 11. Let's go completely nuts. Some might say irresponsibly so, Dan. What if I said to you, I see your coverage strangle and I raise you a coverage straddle? What would you say to me? <laughs> I say bring it and let's talk about the differences. All right. It is brought. Consider it brought, sir. The, the glove has been thrown. The gauntlet is down. All right. Here we go. The coverage straddle, listeners. Again, this is not for the faint of heart. This is not for everybody. I think for a lot of you, even the coverage strangle may be a little bit too much at first. But we're turning it up to 11. We're going crazy here. So be careful. Maybe listen with one ear ready to get the heck out of Dodge and get out of the room because it may be too crazy. Keep the children out for this one. Let's just put it that way. All right. Coverage straddle. What are we talking about here? Same name, XYZ. I hear rumors Dan's doing better out there now in XYZ. I know it was a problem for a while, but I'm hearing good things. I'm cleaning up right now in X. Hope you're doing well in XYZ listeners. XYZ still trading that same level, $50. Everything about our first example is going to hold true in terms of the underline. But now you're looking at it and saying, you know what? I think this thing's really going to hang out here and do nothing for the next month. What do I do then? I really want to kind of juice this thing up, really make it worth my while. 
to hold this stock for the next month. I don't want to sit here twiddling my thumbs holding this stock. So you look around, you look at that 60 call we just sold. We got a buck for that. You say, that's okay. How can I do better? And then you look all the way down to the at the money strike, the 50 call in our example, one month out. That's trading for $3 in all example. You say, you know what? I like that. I will sell that. (laughs) So you've sold now an at the money covered call effectively an XYZ for one month. You've collected $3. So in our example, you're already 6% to the good, 6% return on that strategy. Not a bad deal. All things considered, you folks know the pros and cons of covered call, the break-evens, all that kind of fun stuff. I won't get into that now. If you're not familiar with covered calls, listeners, again, go back to the early archives. I probably don't need to tell you that. You folks are just devouring the archives of the show like mad. But uh, in case you're not familiar with that, go check out all the pros and cons of covered calls there. But now, okay, we've done that at the money covered call. That's already kind of turning it up a few notches here. Good chance your stock's getting called away. You're going to have to rinse and repeat in a month. But what if even that, listeners, what if even that is not enough? You want, nay, you demand more income in your life. You keep looking at that options chain, and you look over from the call, and you say, hmm, that 50 strike put one month out, also trading for $3. And you know what? I like the stock here. I don't mind picking up a little bit more here, adding to my position. What if I go big or I go home and I'm already at home, so let's go big. You decide to sell that 50 put as well, also for three bucks in our example. Now what have you done? You crazy, crazy mad fool you. You've sold the front month at the money call for $3 and now the front month at the money put also for $3. So you've net sold that at the money straddle for $6 in our example. So... Pretty good income stream, $50 stock. You're talking 12% already you've generated just from this straddle. And now also you're putting yourself in a position where with pretty much any tick of the underlying, something is going to happen. If it ticks up a cent by expiration and and closes there, you're going to be letting go of that stock. But at a decent effective price of $56, remember, you have to add them both together. So that's not a bad little return there. To the downside, same deal. If it ticks one cent, below that 50 handle at expiration, then you're going to be on the hook to buy that stock. But remember, same deal. You collected $6, so you're effectively going to be buying it for the price of $44 to the downside. So the pros of this, pretty obvious, an explosive amount of income. Uh, You're also selling an at-the-money straddle. We've all know, we've read Dan's book about the Greeks. We all know the the at-the-money is where the theta decay is the highest. So that straddle is going to be decaying like mad. So you're going to get a lot of decay coming your way fairly quickly as your reward for having the cojones to step up to the plate for this strategy. The downside is that uh, literally anywhere the stock goes, something is happening to you on the stock side. Either you're letting your stock go to the upside or you're buying more on the downside. So you have to be prepared for that. The same caveat with the strangle also applies here. There is an opportunity cost to this. You're going to be on the hook for that 50 strike put now. So there's going to be more margin required for this than there was for the strangle where you sold the 40 strike put. So bear that in mind, a higher opportunity cost, but that makes sense. You're generating more reward. You should have to take a little bit more risk, a little bit more opportunity cost to do that. So Dan, we've kind of gone crazy now. We, we've just we've just lost our minds. We're selling covered straddles now. I should also mention the covered in all these listeners, very much in air quotes. You're really obviously only covered on the call side. The put side, you're just adding to your risk. That's why it's really covered in air quotes. Dan, what are your thoughts on this mad, mad strategy of the covered straddle, sir? When would you use this at MTM? Well, there's a couple important differences. And, you know, let's let's go over something about the covered strangle first that maybe we didn't make super clear. Maybe we glossed over a bit. One of the really powerful things to both of these, but let's stick with the strangle first, is that you get to take in two premiums. So it's like a covered, you know, if the if the stock ends up getting called away from the covered call, it's like a covered call on steroids because you get the premium from the call, but then also the put, which becomes worthless. Or if you get assigned on the put and buy more stock, which, you know, would be your objective, um, you're getting it at not just the regular discount of the strike minus the put premium, but the strike minus put premium minus the call premium. So the difference here between the two is that you're 
your break evens are are going to be a little bit closer together here with the straddle probably but you're getting the juicier meatier premium with these um it, presuming you're doing it at the money which is not ne- necessary but so um you're probably going to want to use these on a more stable stock uh because you're more likely to get assigned on both the call and the put. Um, And you're really just trying to bring in that juicy premium and, you know, maybe willing to play the game a little bit, have this part of uh, the wheel strategy, or as I like to call the recycle strategy where, Hey man, you know, I think it'll be pretty stable, even though I know I could get assigned on either. If I get assigned on on the puts, then great, I'll just write two calls and and that's fine. If I get assigned on the calls, great, I'll just write two puts and um, you know, hope to get assigned and keep this thing going. Think back in your brain, sir, deep into the brain pan. When's the last time you traded a covered straddle? You know, a covered straddle, I think, was a while back. I do kind of prefer the covered strangle over it because it does give you a little bit more of that play. You know, um, it, it gives you a little bit more room to run to the upside, which if I own the stock, I, I tend to want. And it gives you a little bit more margin for error to the downside and be able to buy it at a, at a cheaper price, which I tend to also want. So covered straddles been a bit, I think covered strangle. Um, you know, I can definitely think back on those. Yeah, I'm with you. I definitely preferred the covered strangle. I think for the lion's share of our audience, uh, the covered strangle is definitely the way you're going to want to go listeners for all the reasons Dan just laid out, gives you a lot more wiggle room, a little bit more nuance to that strategy. And there's very few people who want to step up, have a stock they already own and want to buy more of it immediately at the money. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit below in the case of our example there. Uh, it's, it's a very nuanced strategy. I, I even debated including the coverage straddle on this because this is such a limited use case scenario. Like Dan said, you're looking for a stock that's not going to do much, but also you're looking for a stock that has a, a fairly high level of implied volatility because it's really an implied ball play at the end of the day that's going to come crashing in over the next month. So not many stocks fit that fit that scenario out there. So, yeah, it's not for everyone. In fact, I would say the coverage straddle is not for the lion's share of you out there. We really just kind of included it so you could see the two different strategies, kind of compare and contrast them decide which one is more usable for you. But I, like Dan, I'm very hard-pressed to think of the last time I ever traded a coverage straddle. It's been well over well over a decade, at least. Coverage strangles, I kind of leg into those all the time. We did those. We were joking about that with uh, Oatly. It was some of the, the sell-offs we had out there. That uh, actually, that might have actually, they might have actually ended up legging into a straddle. It might be the, that might be the way I did it. I legged into it, selling the puts first, weirdly enough, but then the stock rallied and selling some calls. <laughs> so, but that was not by plan. That was more by the inertia of the underlying and wanting to have some content for our options oddity show, which you guys can check out every Friday over there on the pro side. It's pretty fun, but yeah, I digress. This coverage straddle, again, not for the faint of heart, not for most of you out there. But I wanted to include it. I think for a lot of you, though, if you're looking for a way to gin up your returns out there a little bit right now, the covered strangle isn't the worst option, particularly, again, we say this all the time. People always nod their head and say yes. But on the downside, the short put leg, you really have to be comfortable buying the stock there. If you are okay in your heart of hearts saying, I will buy the stock there, then the covered strangle is a great strategy for you. And if not, if you're just selling that put for a little bit extra juice, but you're not really comfortable buying the stock, they may have to end up doing a put spread or something uh, to mitigate your downside risk there, which obviously has other other issues along with it. You're going to mitigate how much income you're generating. But for a lot of you out there, especially this environment we're in right now, a lot of single names have been kind of beaten up. And so maybe you have it if you don't mind letting some go, if it retraces to the upside, but also you don't mind picking up some more if it keeps going to the downside. That's a scenario where a covered strangle would work very well. Before we get out of here for this first episode of our double header here today, Dan, let's pay off our question of the week, a little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. Whew. 
I don't know about you, listeners. I'm sweating. I'm sweating from all the excitement there of that coverage straddle. Dan, that was pretty nuts. Are you okay? You doing all right over there? Well, yeah, it's been, I, I've, I've got the sweats myself. I, I had to, uh, you know, strip down to my t-shirt here. <laughs> I know you're normally day drinking by this time of the day, but you probably had to pick up a little bit extra this morning when you knew we were talking about coverage straddles. That's a little bit, little bit, a little bit much for you, sir. <laughs> exactly. I'll let you have another sip while I pay off some of our, our questions of the week. We asked you folks last week, by the way, you guys, if you're not doing so, you should be following us over there at options on Twitter. That's where all these questions of the week live. We asked you last week if you had to buy a 10% out of the money call expiring the end of the year on one of the following crypto assets. This was inspired by our crypto rundown program airs every Monday on the network listeners. Uh, we said, which one would you pick? Gave you three choices and the infamous other. So Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, and then the other was, in this case, I'm done with Bitcoin. Or I'm done with crypto, I should say. And Dan, that one ended up taking it. Exactly a third, 33.3% said they're done with crypto, followed by 30% for Bitcoin, 20% for ETH, and 16.7% for Solana, what say you, sir? Does that surprise you? Uh, you know, I mean, not not really that much. I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't surprise me that much, but I I wish it was <laughs> different because I just I I'm I'm not in the Bitcoin camp like that. I would like to see our listeners less Bitcoin because. I just think, I mean, I've talked about this before. I just think it's a different game. Uh, and people have now, like, there now is a justification for cryptocurrency, except, you know, besides this, like, kind of crazy, you know, thing like, oh, yeah, we're going to create a new currency and, you know, world governments are just going to let us do this, which is beyond naive. Um, what cryptocurrency becomes is a, a, a method, a tool, a mechanism, I guess is what I was looking for, for running Web3. It's, it's become a product. And this idea of it actually being a currency is just an antiquated idea. And that's all Bitcoin can even possibly be right now. Ethereum and Solana, like the backbone of Web3, you know, at, at this point in time with the information that we have, or at least I have right now, they are going to help run the backbone of Web3. So I don't know. I just think Bitcoin's a lousy choice. Uh, I'm done with crypto is an okay choice for now because, uh, you know, I think we got at least a good year before we see any life in, in it. But yeah, I mean, that's my two cents. So you're saying the government of El Salvador is wrong? It's not going to transform all of our currency woes? Bitcoin, sir. How dare you? How dare you say such things? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Our audience clearly uh, washing their hands as of right now. Our question of the week this week, Dan, kind of a silly one, kind of a fun one. We just came off the Super Bowl, obviously, here. And there's, if you're not familiar with the listeners, there is, of course, an indicator for everything. And there is one, of course, linked to the Super Bowl as well. The Super Bowl indicator says that a win by the AFC team, a.k.a. the Chiefs, doesn't bode well for the market for the coming year. So we asked you folks this week, are you folks buying what the Super Bowl indicator is selling? Do you think the S is going to close the year in the red? Yes or no? Mr. Dan, are you a big believer, a big follower of the Super Bowl indicator, sir? No, uh, I'm not. I think uh, you have to be somewhat of a man of math and science here and uh you know, <laughs> this is what you might refer to as a coincidental indicator that has no uh, economic merit to it. So it's just a wee bit silly. But hey, man, that's what uh, creates noise in the markets to help, um, you know, help the rest of us make money making uh, statistically sound decisions. <laughs> How dare you? First, you besmirch El Salvador. Now... Talking smack about the Super Bowl. In the, I, don't, I might have to hang up on you, sir. We might have to cancel the second episode. I can't handle <laughs> all this hatred you're putting down here. Uh, right now, our audience not believing it either. They're fading the Super Bowl indicator. They said the ass is going to close up on the year, which technically we are up on the year now. So maybe that's giving them a little bit of a, of a lead. That just ticked. It just went 60% for no, 40% for yes. It was hanging out close to 50-50 for a while. So folks are starting to maybe believe that the market is rallying. I don't know. You believe that, listeners? Uh, hit us up. Let us know. All right, listen, that's going to do it for the first half of our 
double episode extravaganza. Hope we didn't get too crazy for you out there. Well, not just the coverage strangle, but we threw in the coverage straddle. I know, not for the faint of heart. If you can't handle it, don't worry. Dial it back. Pretend we never said it. We just wanted to inform you. Forewarned is forearmed in this scenario. doesn't mean you have to go do it. (laughs) But uh, check it out. Of course, if you have any questions, you know where to find us here. And in fact, if you're one of our pro listeners... You're going to get it right now on the live side or immediately after the show there on the exclusive pro podcast feed. If you want to join all that fun, you know where to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Just sent out a whole bunch of pro trading crates to our winners here this morning. Surprising how much shipping costs these days. (laughs) So we really do love all you pro folks out there. Uh, If you want to get in on that fun, again, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Uh, The Feb crate coming up soon. Get your name in the hat. And Mr. Dan, as a member of our network, you are unfortunately not eligible for a pro trading crate, which bothers the Rock Lobster to no end. He is quite jealous of our pro listeners winning all that cool stuff. But Mm -hmm. if they want to go check you out in the meantime, sir, see what you got cooking in the land of MTM, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, uh, our listeners are always invited to uh, come be part of our community at Market Taker Mentoring, which is just simply at uh, markettaker.com, two T's in a row. That second T is for Theta. <laughs> yes. Don't forget the second T for Theta. Markettaker.com. That's going to do it for us this week on the show. Are back again, of course, with our usual slate of programming on the network throughout the week. The Option Block Episode 2 with the Flowmaster tomorrow. Twifo coming up after that. Friday, Volatility Views. And then, of course, for all you pro folks, Options Oddities. Then back again around all the way next week to another episode on Wednesday. Another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>